Ξέρεις, η τάχα για να ακούσω. Και βγάλα μια φωτογραφία και έβαλα την μέσα στα site, ξέρω εγώ και λέγαν «Κοιτάξτε εδώ, πέρασε η ομονία, ο Μίλου και να κλάψει». Ξέρεις, γράφα μου κάτω το έγραφα. Εδώ, welcome to another edition of the No Chofters podcast on the OLB. Don't forget to like, subscribe, tell your nunna, you know, all that good stuff. I'm your host, Stel. I've got Roy back with me. It's been a while since you've been on the podcast, Φίλε μου. You've been hiding under a rock or something. Petra to Romeo, and there you, you've been hiding. Oh, I mean, yeah, man. I uh, I have to make the fans wait for me, man. <laughs> Look at this guy. He has one photograph with Henningberg. He makes them a sports newspaper. Jago, or Chadley sitting there waiting for this guy to say, yeah, like, come to Cyprus and take a photograph of Henning with me. <laughs> man. Jesus Christ. Well, it's good to have you back, Philemon. And we have a very special <laughs> guest. He's a commentator on Primetel. Gostas Babadopoulos. Gosta, welcome to the show, Filemu. How are you doing? Hi, guys. Uh, very well, thank you. Uh, it's, uh, really, it's a pleasure to have the chance to talk with you. Thank you very much. Is it, is it, is it hot in there? You got your aircon? Mm, uh, not exactly Grafion. Uh, we are working from home still. Ah. So uh, this is my uh, office at home. Man, and like tough. All well, the season's going to start soon. Are you going to be in the stadiums again, or how are you going to? Yes, yes. Uh, I'm. I'm still going there at the stadiums. Uh, I'm going at uh, Prime Tel headquarters when there is a game to commentate. But all the rest of the hours, we are working from home. Nice. So here Lovely. I am. Lovely, lovely. Well, I'm sure you you watched the Monia's game last night against Dinamo Zagreb. It wasn't the result that we wanted. I said before the game, I'll be thrilled with a 0-0. I could accept the 1-0, but the second goal, it was it was a hammer blow. But I think the frustrating thing for me is that we, we got our system correct, I believe anyway, but the two goals that we conceded were were sloppy. There were errors that you wouldn't expect from Omoni. And at this level, you can't afford to make these mistakes. So what did you make about the, the game in general? Um, to be honest, uh, the way Omoni played was the way I expect and everyone else expected because uh, we've seen last year uh, Omonia's uh, campaign in uh, Europa League that was based in the defense. Uh, it was uh, hard to score against Omonia and that was what uh, Henning Berg had in mind, I believe, also yesterday. It, it seems, it looked like it was uh, in his hands for... Uh, big time of the game but uh, as you as you said uh, still you have to be concentrate from the first till the final whistle so uh, a lack of uh, concentration uh, brought the the first goal and then you know it's uh, football it's psychology and uh, they got the first and they got the second and uh, as you said 1-0 was uh, okay a uh, good result because at uh, GSP Nicosia, it's going to be a different game, but uh, second goal was uh, hard. Yes, it's difficult now. Yeah, and Roy, you and I haven't really spoken about this one. Um, I know you're just as frustrated as I am, if not more. But I think it goes back to what we spoke about after the uh, PSV game at the Gassi B, where the, both the goals that we conceded, you could tell it was fatigue. It was a lack of concentration. And, and we keep talking about when you don't have the ball, it's so draining, so, so draining. And we were chasing shadows for the last 20 minutes of the game, weren't we? Yeah, uh, well, okay. First, uh, an opening statement. I'd say I, I agree with uh, Costas. Uh, we, we approached the game in a manner that we were used to. Uh, the team, obviously, the core of the team was there. The only player uh, from the transfers was Mix. And the rest, uh, there were no surprises in the 11. What I can say is that at the beginning, not only did we defend well, but um, I think we tried to attack something we weren't doing last year in, in the games. I don't know, because last year it was clear that we went to the game and we didn't want to concede a goal. But yesterday, we tried to do that. But at the same time, the first 20 minutes or so, we... You couldn't tell the difference in quality between the two teams. Um, and uh, I, I really liked the way Omonia played up until the 
65th, let's say, minute when we conceded the goal, which was okay, uncharacteristic, but at the same time, you know, uh, we, we, we only made two mistakes yesterday. We paid for both of both of the mistakes. Um, and um, well, I, I don't know. I think you're being a bit too too uh, lenient for that one because the second goal was a comedy show, as far as I'm concerned. There was they were ball watching. They weren't watching the the man for the short corner. They fell asleep. The cross was allowed to be put in the box. There was three men around the guy that headed the ball in the back of the net, and not one of them made the made an uh, attempt to clear the ball. It was just basic defending that they got wrong. And I'm, I'll be the first to admit, you know, last season I was very. Um, What's the word? Complimentary about the, the back line because they're phenomenal. You know, how many clean sheets did we keep? But th there's no excuse for, for that second goal. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I think you're a, a bit harsh on them because um, let's don't forget that uh, in order to score a goal, either you have to make an exceptional uh, effort or uh, by, by mistake from the opposition. And it's in the game. I mean, the second, the second goal was, uh, I agree with you, someone else uh, could jump in the ball first. Um, it was in the first post and things like that, but uh, the head was great, difficult head. He was in the second post. It was very difficult for Fabiano to, to save this. I mean, there are a lot of things to uh, concede or score a goal. I mean, luck is always a part of this. Even this is an easy goal, uh, Difficult goal, uh, anything. I think luck is always among the ingredients of uh, scoring a goal. Oh, absolutely. And the thing is, we needed a bit of luck in the first half when when Duris had that chance. Uh -huh. um, if he puts it in the back of the net, the goalkeeper was stranded. It, it's one zero, and the game completely changes. And I think there's a lot of fans that were very critical of of Omonia, um, saying, oh, we, we were too negative. But as as Roy said, even the, in the first half, we, we were on the front foot and you couldn't tell which team was the home team. Yes, it, it, it seems it seems to that, that it was a game that Omonia uh, could gain from that, even easy. Uh, when you when you watch the first half, I mean, even if you watch the comments, everybody start believing that uh, Omonia could get away with, at least with a draw. But it was a game uh, really balanced. Uh, Omonia had the chance, as uh, Roy said, if if Omonia could score first, uh, it was going to be a, diff a different uh, game. But that's football. I mean, uh, Dinamo Zagreb, it's a good team. It's a great team. Okay. So uh, Omonia had some chances. Not many, but uh, they create chances. If uh, they could score, it was going to be a difficult, a different game. But uh, since they conceded first, it was a different game again. But uh, I mean, in general, um, what I what I've seen from Ammonia it was uh, quite good and uh, optimistic. Absolutely. Not, not just for the sake. I'm not talking about the second leg game, but I mean in general because don't forget that it's um, only the second game, uh, official game after the Super Cup. Um, no uh, new players except uh, Mix, as Roy mentioned. So I think it's uh, positive overall, despite well, I, I uh, to the score. I agree, and and you know Dinamo that was their fourth competitive game of the season. They played the two in the qualifier the previous round. They played the league game, and and obviously yesterday was their fourth uh -huh. game. So they they're physically fitter. They've got the energy levels, but I think in the second half they. They stepped up a gear and they had that in them. The fullbacks were getting forward more and more. They weren't playing the ball as central as they were before because I saw Mix coming in from the left to tuck in in the middle to, to support Jordi and, and Gusu. And we were doing really well in the middle of the park. They weren't threatening us. So they're putting the ball out wide to Orsic and putting the ball in the box. And we dealt with it. It was it was basic stuff. But second half, they stepped up a gear. Uh, Roy, are you confident that we can get something into the second leg here because, listen, stranger things have happened and, listen, it's not three. If it was three, I'd say game over, but I'm, I'm, I'm relatively positive of going into the second leg. Yeah, listen, man, okay. Even before yesterday's game, the Dynamo was... We knew there, there was a, a team that was fairer and that was Dynamo, okay? Watching the game yesterday, uh, I believe that if we were just a little bit more concentrated, I don't want to use the word lucky so much, but yeah, concentrated, I say, 
and I don't want to get into further details. Ah, if we had signed the player earlier, and if we had this and that, I'm I'm talking about με τους παίκτες που έχουμε τώρα, ρε φίλε. Ως παίκτες που έχουμε, I don't know how how Mr. Berg is gonna try and approach the game because you need two goals without conceding one. Okay, let's take it a step at a time. So we might play with the exact same way we played yesterday and think, okay, even if I score a goal in the 80th minute, the 85th minute, I've got another five minutes plus stoppage time to get a second one. Because I don't think we're going to go batshit, xero, apeshit, che na bezzu mene pihesi nulli, che ate emba, che si joni mu, emba, che babulli mu, emba, e gadara, en na bezzi vale si giris mena, taktika... He never did that before. Yeah, I mean, so, in similar occasions, he never did that. So I'm with you. I think that uh, that's going to go. Uh, yeah, be careful. And, uh, but okay. Um, like you said, stranger things have happened. Uh, we don't have anything to lose. We're going to go there. Okay. And, and try. I'm not even going to say, ah, you know, if we get an early goal and the fans and the heat and all of that. No. We have to have a, a very specific approach, which is probably the one we mentioned earlier, a bit more conservative. I don't know if we're going to try and surprise them in the beginning, the early minutes or whatever, but I don't think the team's going to be a lot different. Maybe one or two players, but even maybe the, the same 11, knowing Mr. Berg, you know, he's... Uh -huh. uh, But yeah, I mean, anything can happen, man. Anything can happen. So I'm I'm not overly confident, but I'm not, you know, disappointed or like, oh, it's all over or whatever. We might have a. I believe in the team. I believe in the team, and I believe we can. We're going to try. We're not going to go without a fight. I mean, I'm I'm very confident of that. Yes, that's for sure. I, I believe so too. But uh, okay. Uh, to nail it's a uh, clear advantage for uh, Dinamo Zagreb. Uh, we have to see how they are going to approach the game because, of course, they won't be, uh, I think, I, like they were yesterday, despite the fact that uh, I've read uh, their coach uh, statement after the game and he said that uh, he wanted to wait Omonia. Probably he wanted to see how Mr. Berg was going to play, but uh, he didn't rush. Uh, okay, uh, he got the score and he can say that that was the plan. Okay, but uh, the truth is that uh, in the first half, we haven't seen Dinamo Zagreb being so aggressive. So let's see. Yeah, yeah this is it. It's going to be an interesting game. Oh, 100%. 100%. Mm -hmm. I, I can't see them changing their system. I can't see them uh, making many uh, changes to the lineup. I know a couple of players went off injured yesterday. One of them did, did, took a really big knock with Jordi. <laughs> he was uh, he, will, he will be playing most probably. Yeah. I the was... other one, the captain. Uh... Hamstring. Yes. Hamstring, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just five to six weeks. But yeah, I thought the, the kid that went off concussed. He looked concussed anyway, but might have just been winded. It was know. in the chest. It was a strong hit in the chest. Right. So. So it'll be, it'll be fit, but yeah, uh -huh. let's see. Anyway, right, let's move swiftly on to the next subject, which is the, the season preview and uh, lots of <laughs> transfers, as you'd imagine. It's, it's, it's an annual thing in Cyprus, isn't it? Players yes. come and go. It's, it's incredible. Abolon have completely ripped up the blueprint and started from scratch. Abuel have been signing players left, right, and center. They, they've been signing a lot of unorthodoxy players. So uh -huh. I don't know what that means. Um, Ayel have been very shrewd, as have Ayek Lannaka Costa. They, they've surprised me, to be fair. And I spoke to Matt before he joined uh, Ayek. He wasn't telling me where he was going to go, but um, he ended up at Ayek. And I think that's a very good move for him and the club. Um, Ayek uh, probably made the more transfers of all. That's what I believe, if I am correct. More than 10, 11 players. Um, you see, Ike uh, last year had uh, a bad season. Uh, we used to see Ike the last few years being among the top three, going to Europe. And uh, last year they had a bad season. They made uh, several mistakes. They changed. Don't forget that they changed three or four uh, 
different coach uh, for the season. Um, the players uh, they signed, almost all of them uh, left because uh, they didn't give what uh, was expected from them. But uh, we have uh, Roca's uh, return. He was given the keys and he's making uh, many, many uh, signings. We have to wait and see. It's uh, almost a brand new team, Mike. I, I can't say that it's going to be uh, working out for uh, for them, but we have to wait and see. Because too many changes, it's not easy to become a combat uh, uh, team. I mean, such a, sh a short notice, even if the players are good. And we know very well in Cyprus that uh, we want to see, I mean, the fans want to see results yesterday. Uh, you don't have the time to work the team you don't have the time to improve you can you are allowed to improve in cyprus if you are a coach only through victories if you're not winning you are leaving well, this is it because if i remember correctly okay they, they had um sofroni back in the last season didn't they uh -huh. uh, prior to that they had a spanish guy that lasted two spanish guys two spanish guys yeah one of them got sacked after we beat them 2-1 at the gazi b right uh, he he was uh, at the bench just for four games. Uh, I mean, um, the uh, defeat from Omonia was his first, and he and he was sacked. It's unbelievable. It's, it's unbelievable because there are people that watch this podcast from the UK, and when I tell them about the amount of managerial changes that happened in Cyprus, they can't believe me. When when Mick McCarthy joined Abuel, I said to them. Five months maximum, six months if he's lucky. Was there for what, two, three? <laughs> that? I, I don't think that it was three. It was maybe <laughs> less than two, I think. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. But that, that's how it is out there. So it's not, for, for you guys, it's it's normal. But for, for an outside, it's like, ah, well, this, this is unbelievable. What, what, what's, what's going on? So in, in terms of, again, going back to Ike very quickly, um, they brought in Thiago as well, who's a big game player for Monia last season. He's got a lot of important goals. I, I miss him already. Um, do you think he can push him into a European spot this season or do, will, as you said it takes time um, listen Thiago is a great player I really really liked him from his presence in Omonia and even before when he was in uh, Nea Salamina but uh, it's not a one month job it's, it's a team if the team is not a combat uh, they don't find the chemistry as we say it's difficult to work out, but uh, if you make so many transfers and actually it's a brand new team, uh, I can't say. Uh, they, yes, they did get, uh, I mean, on papers, uh, if, if we, despite those players we know, I mean, Thiago, Matt, and those we know, they're good players. The others, the, the newcomers, are also good players on paper, but we will have to wait and see. It's it's an enigma for me. I I, I don't know what's gonna be for mm. Ike. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, let's talk about another team then. Abolon. Uh, last season, I was calling them the, I called them the Gurabiedes because they were crumbling under pressure, and that's what seemed to happen to them at the back end of the season. When when push came to shove, they didn't seem to get it over the line. I know Dingini's injury obviously hampered them. Um, but this season, as I said before, they've, they've completely scrapped everything. They brought in Zorniger, the, the German, and he's very strict. He loves his stopwatch. Um, from their perspective, do you see the same situation with Ayek in terms of they need time to gel? Because I saw them in the friendly against uh, Ayek Athens, and they didn't look too badly. They, they were defending and breaking in numbers, but you can't do that for 90 minutes in every game, can you? Um uh, what I know, because um, I'm not watching them so much now, because I used we used to as Prime Tell we used to commentate their games uh, as well, but uh, not for the past two years. But what I know it's that uh, the German changed completely the style of play, the system, and everything. It's something very, very uh, uh, different from what they have been playing the last uh, few years. So uh, this is a question mark uh, because in order to play uh, this kind of system, the 4-4-2, I mean, with uh, Rombo, 
who wants to play the German, uh, you have to add uh, specific players to do so. I don't know the players. Uh, I know that if you change a system, it's not um, something that uh, you can bet your hand that it's going to work. But also, I know that there is a lot of pressure from the fans because um, Apollon had a lot of fans. Apollon um, is uh, fighting for the championship the last few years. Uh, they didn't manage to get anything and uh, the pressure is uh, to the roof. So uh, the tolerance in Apollon will be much less than most probably all other teams. So in, Just from the fans or from the, the president? No, I mean from the fans. From the fans. Do you think the president will give him time then? Uh, the German? Yeah. It's uh, as always, results. If you start and the uh, team is winning, he will buy some time for him. He will, he will buy the chance to prove himself because that's what, uh, what's happening in Cyprus. You buy, if you're a coach, you're buying uh, the time through victories to prove uh, yourself. But uh, if not, he will be leaving as well. And you said that it's something that we are used to it. Yes, we are used to it because it's happening all the time. But uh, we know that <laughs> that's not what's supposed to do. Yeah. We are doing these things wrong yeah. in many ways. And Absolutely. this is one of them. Absolutely. Well, one team that has stuck by their manager and he signed a new contract, they won the cup last season at San Rosario. Uh -huh. Again, a, a club that they've, a few players have left. Most of the Georgian players have left, but they brought in Carl Lafferty. They brought in the, the Finnish central defender from Buffalo. And they brought in a few other players, but they, they they look like they're trusting more in their academy these days. Would that be fair to say? Um, I think uh, uh, that was a story in Super Cup because uh, a lot of newcomers uh, were not ready to play. Um, on the other hand, because I don't want to be, I want to be fair against uh, against Paya. He's one of the few guys, I mean, coaches that. Uh, and especially in a big club with fans, uh, that when he believes uh, in a player, he doesn't care if he's 17, he's 18, he's 19. Uh, that's what uh, Berg is doing as well. But uh, this is not the rule. Th these are ex uh, exceptions, okay? Because um, as you most probably know, uh, we are the country using the most foreigners, uh, European players, and less from locals. We don't trust them, and it's bad because there yeah. is a lot of talent. And if you get a player, let's say an average player, because um, the majority of the players coming here to Cyprus, I mean, uh, either Europeans or foreigners, are, uh, are not something uh, great. Okay, average players. Those kind of players you can find here in Cyprus, uh, but uh, they have to get the chance because if you're a young uh, Cypriot guy, Cypriot football player in Cyprus, you, you're going to get your chance, let's say, in a game, 10 minutes. Again, in those 10 minutes, you have to prove that you, you deserve 15 minutes, but uh, the next game, it's going to be in a month or in two months' time. It's not the same for the foreigner, the European player, because you cannot play every week. So if you're playing every week, it's much more easier to show what you, what you can do by uh, by playing uh, one every one or two months. And there are too many players, uh, good players, young players that uh, don't get their chances. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're seeing that with the likes of Johnny's and Luis and et cetera, et cetera, with, with our team. And we spoke to Jesper Fredberg a few weeks ago and he told us about how they... Hen Henningberg yeah. is, is a very good example. You know you know why? Because um, Johnny's was not born uh, two years ago when... Uh, didn't start playing football two years ago when Berg came. Uh, those guys, I mean, Jonis, uh, Loizu, Jara Lambus, or Hambos, or uh, all those young guys are lucky because they, they were good players, okay? But 
uh, Berg came and gave them the chance to prove that they are good players. Um, if it was someone else, even if Ammonia, uh, maybe uh, we wouldn't heard of most of them by now. But yeah, unfortunately, this is a story here. Yeah. Well, fortunately, we do have a coach that believes in the in the youth. So. <laughs> Roy. Yeah, I was uh, okay. Before we complete, um, we went on mass about the the teams we like to talk about up well with Costas as well. And it's a game when you get Nigi, we went on that. What is any of the problems? What is Benus to Prasla as favorite? Yeah, yeah. Men are like Sakatara, Iomonia to favorite. To like to Mehri. Να δείξουν οι άλλες ομάδες των Πολαλουσάδητες πριν με το στέλ, ότι πότε να δέσουν mm-hmm. και πώς να φτιάξουν οι αλλαγές. Εγώ θεωρώ ότι η ομόνια ξέγε, ό,τι και να γίνει στην μεταγραφική του την, η ομόνια ξεκινά ως το πρώτο φαβορή. Επειδή είναι πρώτα θύτρια, ήταν πρώτοι δύο χρονιές συνεχόμενες, έχει τον ίδιο προπονητή, έχει έναν κορμό, έχει μια φιλοσοφία, μια ταυτότητα. Προφανώς τα παιχνίδια της Ευρώπης και η δύσκολη αρχή στο πράθυμα, Μπορεί να το στοιχήσουν, αλλά ας πούμε, το, τι, τι πιστεύεις ας πω, για το ΑΠΟΕΛ συγκεκριμένα που πέρσι ήρθε ο 8, προφανώς θα έρθει ο 8, αλλά έπιασε παίχτες τους, οποίους ξέρουμε, τους τρεις Γεωργιανούς, έπιασε τον Καρό, έπιασε τον Θεοδόρου, έφερε να προσπαθεί να φέρει πίσω τον Σόουζα, όταν φαίνεται να γίνεται καλή δουλειά, αλλά τι νομίζεις εσύ. Ε, Εν τω μεταξύ, Ροή, συγχύζεις με. Δεν ξέρω να μιλήσω αγγλικά, να μιλήσω κυπριακά. Τι να μιλήσω. Στέλ. Wherever you like. Wherever you like. We have, we have viewers in Cyprus as well. So, <laughs> ό,τι θέλεις, φίλε μου. Οκ. I will try to talk in English because more Cypriot can uh, understand. And, no, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. It's okay. fine. Speak real. Yeah. Uh, I agree with, uh, with you, Ροή. Uh, first of all, that for me, Omonia is uh, my favorite. Uh, for the reasons that you have mentioned, uh, for the reasons also of um, psychological reasons, because, you know, when Omonia was down, I mean, fifth, sixth, and things like that, they had this uh, psychological disadvantage. If, if you have been losing for a long time, you know, uh, there's a burden. Uh, two years uh, top, uh, έχει ψυχολογικό προβάδισμα, έχει. Είναι μια ομάδα δουλεμένη, μια ομάδα που έχει τον ίδιο προπονητή for third season in a row, which for me it's of great importance, great importance. One coach who showed himself. Okay, so I agree with you that there's the top favorite for the championship. Now, as it comes to Abuel, Okay, last season, he, he cannot be worse than last season. Okay, that's a uh, fact. Hopefully uh, they can. <laughs> Hopefully they can. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tora, uh, the players, uh, we took the good players. Okay, yeah. I mean, um, let's say Gvilidaya, I believe it's a great uh, striker. I like him very, very much. And I mean, I liked him from his presence in uh, a team that was not playing for him. Anorthosi uh, could not provide him uh, with the passes that he, he wanted, he needed to score more goals. And uh, despite all this, he managed to score several goals. So I think Vili is a great player. Uh, now, Okriasvili, he's also a great player. But uh, he has his ups and downs, and uh, this is quite tricky for me in a team that there is also a great demand. They demand the championship, and uh, it's a question mark. But I, I, I believe he's a great player, but he's not stable. I mean, uh, when he's playing, um, he also took Danilo from Ael, very good player. Um, Theodore, very good player, but uh, we have to wait and see uh, what Pursaidi this will do because uh, um, he couldn't be judged to hush for last season. I mean, he went there to save things he found, 
Um, so this year it's uh, a big uh, effort for him as well because for fe- for f- uh, the first time in his coaching career is uh, coaching a big club uh, with uh, effort for the title with with a club that he will build. So let's see. I think that they are going to be there, but. I don't know uh, how good or uh, how long are they going to be there if they are going to be a serious contender for the title. Um, An orthos is they're going to be there as well. Uh, I have to admit that um, honestly, I didn't understand the way they were trying to play last season. I've been watching them. I didn't like what I saw. I mean, their game. Um, and I think it's since uh, Ketspaya stayed, um, I think that it's going to be similar, like their game. Now, with regards to their players, we have to, as you said, uh, they try to um, take players that uh, are known to him. I mean, from his presence in Cyprus, either in Cyprus or in Greece. Um, but we are in Cyprus. Uh, the, the same teams, the same clubs that uh, they fight for the championship uh, every season, they're going to be here. And I wait as always to see which club is going to be the surprise package of the season. Um, what about Isle then? They're a club who haven't got rid of a load of players, but they've brought in very... Um, I think they've, they've been very shrewd in this window. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, listen, I, I lost uh, good players. Mm, okay, Danilo was Maya's a good player. Some, yeah. Maya was a very good player. They lost players. But um, I really like uh, Dusan Kerkes. I really like him. Uh, I was uh, a team that it was uh, eye-catching. Um, you could see that they are trying to do something. They are trying to play. They have a plan. Um, I think their season last year was great with what they had in uh, their hands and the budget and all, all this. Um, and uh, as far as I know, uh, Kerkes was the one picking up the players. So uh, he proved last year that uh, he got good eye. Uh, If uh, his newcomers are uh, of the same quality, let's say, I think they're going to be there as well. Yeah, I think the one disadvantage or the one negative that I will have, and and, Roy is going to laugh at this one or he's going to argue with me again because we always argue about this guy, but Vozinha, the goalkeeper, Uh I think for a goalkeeper who's got so much experience as national team player, a lot of the goals that he concedes, you're thinking that with some of his experience, he should know better being beaten at his near post or like the goal against uh, Abolon where he was dwelling on the ball and business while put him under pressure. For me, he's always been their weak link. I mean, I don't know what you think about Vozinha because Roy tells me that he's one of the best keepers in the league, but I... I will say this because everybody, everybody uh, remembers the goal against Abolon, but I think that... Um... The specific goal came uh, because Vozinha is a very good uh, player with the feet. In the modern football, uh, goalkeepers ha- have to be able to play with their feet as well. Vozinha is uh, very good with the feet. I mean, uh, at least for me, I'm 100% sure watching the game as well, that it, it was uh, overconfident. <laughs> in that uh, particular uh, moment. And that was his mistake, let's say. And that was uh, what I paid in the end. But uh, it's a good it's a good goalkeeper. I mean, he is, I will agree with Roy that he's among the best in Cyprus, but um, uh, he has that lack of concentration, uh, maybe not very often, but uh, he was unlucky because uh, those time last season that uh, this thing occurred, uh, he paid uh, with a very harsh way. Well, okay, let's see how it goes this season because I, I think they will be 
our closest title rivals. I think it will take a bit of time for our Bollon to, to get going, but if they do stick with this manager, I think they can be a very dangerous team. And, and as for Abuel, you said they're not going to have a worse team, worse season than last season. I agree. And I think they will be top six. But yes, yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting season, especially with Carl Lafferty out there as well, because yeah, he's he's got his knees are like sandpaper. So you know. <laughs> Roy, any questions? I think um, so. I, I, if 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 we have to, you said. You agreed with uh, with us that Omonia are favourites. Uh, who do you see as um, the closest contenders? Abuel. Uh, Abuel. Oh, wow. okay. 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 Abuel and Ael. Maybe one of one of these two teams will follow. That's what I think. Don't you think, though, that uh, this is something... Uh, okay, uh, I don't really care much about that. Well, but because we've witnessed this ourselves as Omonia when we owed a lot of money, uh, whether someone agrees about the amount of money that Abuel owes, it's clear that they're in debt because when uh, Jan Mizdimitriou uh, made the... Um, they found out that they said that it was close to 24 million. Then Prodromos said, no, it's closer to 16 or whatever. So whether it's 24 or 16, one thing's for sure, Apoel owes a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And th they have spent a lot of money this transfer window. Obviously, it's this is the philosophy of, of Prodromos Petridis. He's like a all or nothing type of, of, of guy when he runs it. But I don't know whether at the end of the month when it's payday, Abuel will be able to pay all these players that they, they, they signed. And if the results are not that good, I think that Abuel uh, won't do that. For Abuel to compete for the league, everything has to be... Uh, to, to be honest, Roy, because uh, Prodromos Pedrid is, uh, is not new in yeah. uh, football, no. Um, he will uh, cut this cover. I, I, I believe so. I don't know. I don't have inside information, but I think that he was, he's going to be fine uh, with the money, with the players, because he knows better. He knows that uh, if you are fighting for the title, let's say, and players and uh, you owe money to the players, this is going to be. Uh, very difficult and it's uh, something that can break everything you build in the team. But what what I would say, um, it's going to be very, very interesting. What would be the next day in case that Abuel won't be able to uh, return the top spot? I mean, the next season, not this the upcoming one. The following one, yeah. The, the other, what, what? Because as you said, as Roy said, uh, it's a big risk. Uh, expensive uh, players transfers. Uh, it's a big risk. Uh, Petridis took it, and uh, if things uh, don't go well, uh, the question is what the day after tomorrow, let's say, for the next season is going to be. Mm. Well, the thing is, I mean, I don't know how relevant financial fair play is in Cyprus or how it works, because we hear about it in Europe, like Paris Saint-Germain are spending money, but you know about the money that they're generating through revenue, be it sponsorships or gate receipts. But in Cyprus, obviously, no fans were in the stadium last season. Um, there was no European football index. They were, they were knocked out of the, the, the first round, weren't they, uh, Abuel? So they were knocked out. Um, so there was no European football there. They didn't win the cup. They got to the semi-finals, ended in in the, the the bottom eight. So where has the money come in from? They haven't sold any players, have they? Really, a lot of their players have, have been released on a free or or loaned out. So how have they been able to maintain that financial strength and still bring in all those players? I'm hearing Ogriashvili is on close to three hundred thousand a year for three years. To be honest, I don't know how uh, financial work, not just in Abuel, uh, in Cyprus in general. 
Mm-hmm. So because uh, if you if you start digging this, <laughs> you're gonna see that uh, you have too many questions for almost mm-hmm. everybody. Yeah, is, is and, that when and, I and uh, honestly, it, it's a topic that I don't want to touch because I want to concentrate in the game. Yeah. That's what I like. That's what I love, and not all the things the uh, politics yeah i mean it, yeah. it reminds me of when i was younger and i wanted to go to the cinema i said to my mom mom give me 20 pounds she goes my name is that left ashes and i got it i'm like yeah but there is a donkey in the back garden that's clearly <laughs> shitting money <laughs> but um got so one more thing before we let you go thank you very much Philemon, for joining us it's been an absolute pleasure can you tell us about your your roots to becoming a sports journalist and a commentator because i know there are a lot of kids watching this who have asked me how do i get into the media world. I'm like, I don't know. I just do a podcast. But here we got a professional. So uh, what, what was your your roots like? My roots? Um, I, I, I am... Uh, I tried to, to be a football player uh, from a very, very young age. You, you, see, um, you know, I think that it's uh, football is like a disease. Uh, it gets in your blood and, and it's finished. It's uh, stuck with you forever. So I, I was uh, in love with football from a very young age. Uh, I used to play for Aris Limassol. They are now in the first division. Yeah, top division, yeah. Russian owner, Britain, good mm-hmm. players, aren't they? Yeah. Yes. Um, until uh, my 20s. Uh, then I played for two clubs in third division, Apepel and Rio and uh, I Catholicis. And uh, when I finally re- realized that I'm not going to be a professional football player, I left um, and went to Greece to study sports journalism because I didn't want to study uh, journalism in general. <laughs> I just wanted to <laughs> sports journalism. Um, I got back. I got an interview. I was accepted in uh, Diaz. Uh, you know, Diaz, Simerini, Radio Proto, Sigma, all yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I have been working there for eight years. First two, I was in Limassol, and six, I was going because I'm from Limassol. I was uh, traveling to Nicosia every day and back. Uh, one day I went to pick up my daughter from uh, the kindergarten and uh, he was crying. She was crying because she didn't, re- um, she didn't want me to take her. So I said to myself, uh, something's wrong here because I was working too many hours. Yeah. Uh, if yeah. you're, uh, I was uh, in the TV and you know, if you're in the news, I'm in the sports section, I was coming home at 11, 11.30, and uh, was asleep, she was yeah. asleep, yes. So I left. Uh, I got a proposal from for a um, local TV station that no longer exists, NTV was the name. Um, concurrently, I, I had offers from uh, Sida Vision. I used to commentate games for them. I used to host the Europa League uh, show. Um, and uh, in 2010, ever since, I've in Prime Tel. Uh, good is uh, that the headquarters are here in Limassol, so that suits me fine. Lovely. And uh, your, your co-host does a, does a good job as well. He kicked ball a bit, didn't he? He knows a bit of football. Your, your, your co-host on the show. Ah, Milenko. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know him. Uh, you, you saw him playing. Yeah, yeah. When I was younger, I mean, I'm 40 now. So, yeah, I kind of, yeah. Um, my, my, when I used to come to Cyprus, my uncle always used to put the, the LTV on and other channels, Rick and all that. And it always used to be football. And he talked talk to me about these other players when they were, you know, but yeah, so that's, that's uh, he was a great player, uh, but uh, there are a lot of great players. Mm. What I liked about him is that uh, he's not afraid to talk. Uh, he's going to speak his mind. Uh, either if this, uh, if everybody's shouting, but uh, that's what I like because yeah. he's a straightforward guy and uh, he, ca- he understands football very well. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Roy, you're itching. You're itching. Yeah, I am. 
I'm going to ask this question in Greek because I want to ask Costas. Obviously, as the third is about this is a third is series put up out. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. Go uh -huh. on. Yeah, you know. Epid. I like. Ακουστικά διάφορα, η επίσημη ομονία είπε ότι δεν είχα σχέση για να αντίπαση ήταν έξι διοικητικοί γνώντες και τα λοιπά. Απλά, που τη στιγμή που είσαι στο podcast και έχεις την ευκαιρία να δώσετε τη δική σας εκδοχή, αν θέλετε, προφανώς. Οκ, θέλεις να απαντήσω ελληνικά, σε τούτο ή... Νομίζω ότι εσύ είναι να προτιμήσεις να απαντήσεις ελληνικά. Go ahead, θα πω το εξής, θα πω το εξής. Δεν θέλω να μπω σε πολλές λεπτομέρειες, απλά τούτο που θέλω να πω είναι ότι ε, δεν έχω κανένα παράπονο, ούτε κανένα πρόβλημα με την ομόνια και τον κόσμο της, για τούτο το κομμάτι εννοώ. Ε, οπότε δεν έχει να κάνει με την ομόνια. Οκ. Ως τα μέα. Ναι. Straight to the point. Listen, if there was a problem, you wouldn't be on the No Choftes podcast, isn't it? Uh, uh, you have my word. And I thought that it was... Look, the cosmos... Uh, shall I turn to English? Whatever is easier, Philemon. Whatever is okay. easier. The uh, cosmos in Kipron uh, is uh, much different the way uh, they see football than abroad. Hostel... Uh, που ζει η Αγγλία μπορεί να το, να το επιβεβαιώσει. Δηλαδή, ξέρεις, κάνει κάποιος κομμεντσαρί, ε, κάνει κριτική, ε, στο εξωτερικό γίνεται δεχτή. Αν δεν ξεφύγει, δηλαδή, τώρα ξέρω εγώ, αν δεν βρήσεις, αν δεν υποτιμήσεις κάποιον, αν δεν κάνεις κάποιο ρατσιστικό σχόλιο, ξέρω εγώ, γίνεται δεχτό. Στην Κύπρο, και τούτο δεν ισχύει για τους ομονιάδες μόνο, ισχύει για όλους τους φυλάθους, γιατί λίγο πολλά... Ενώ η νοοτροπία του των τρόπων που αντιμετωπίζουν του δημοσιογράφου είναι ίδια. Δηλαδή, έτσι η διαφορά. Ε, Ξέρει, οι έντια μυστικών, οι ομονιάτε έχουν παράπονο και είχαν που το 2013 που κάνουν την ομονία μαζί μου. Ε, Όπω είχαν οι ομονιάτε, είχαν και οι απολυονίστε πριν, ή έχουν και τη ΣΑΕΚ. Ε, εμένα αυτό που με ενοχλεί είναι η νοοτροπία μα γενικότερα. Δηλαδή, δεν μπορεί να δεχτεί κάποιο ότι. Να του πει, ξέρω εγώ, παίζει με το από έλτσο να μπει σε πέναρτη ε, εναντίον τη ομονία σου να πει Α, οκ, okay, ε, σωστό. Ε, να πει τι λέει, ξέρει. Δεν είναι εύκολο να το δεχτεί. Και τούτο ε, είναι το θέμα με όλου του φιλάθλου. Αλλά. You have to choose the way you do your job. Uh, personally, uh, when I'm in, at the game, I'm not thinking about anything. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm watching the game like this. You know, uh, I don't turn right or left or, or don't think Παναγία μου να μου να βγουν τώρα. Όχι, δεν μπορεί να το κάνω. Τούν το πράγμα δεν μπορεί να το κάνω. Αλλιώς δεν θα έκανα να δουν τη δουλειά. Ξέρω ότι δεν τους αρέσει, αλλά προσπαθώ να πω μόνο γίνο που καταλαβαίνω. Γίνο που νομίζω ότι είναι σωστό. That's it. Do you know what? And see, this is the thing. When I first heard about the issues in inverted commas, I thought, I, what has Gosta said? What what has he said that's upset a lot of people? Now I see things from a different perspective, as you said, because I'm I'm in the UK. Roy will attest mm -hmm. to this. I started doing Instagram videos about Ammonia about a year and a half ago, and people were messaging me being really positive. Some people were being negative. I oh, said, Charlie, you shouldn't be talking about Ammonia, blah, blah blah. I was getting death threats from supporters of other clubs. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's like, well, that's the culture. And it didn't come as too much of a surprise. Well, when I heard about the issues again with, with you and the fans, I was thinking, well, what, what's Gosta actually said that's upset people? Is there anything specific? And I was looking on forums. I was looking on Facebook. I was doing, trying to do as much research as I could to see what, as you said, one thing, or has it been a series of things? And no one could actually give an example, an actual example, word for word, what you've said. Now, I'm not saying this because you're here. Roy will tell you again. I'm straight and narrow. No, I don't give a no, shit. I'll you, tell it like uh, it is. Na, na power, uh, I will tell you an incident uh, just to uh, understand more. Percy, when the ammonia came for the first time, it was a versus uh, Red Star. Yeah, the penalty uh, shoot. Yeah. I was doing the game and um, The game was finished. Uh, Ammonia was uh, in the group stage for the first time in their history. 
and uh, we had stories from the field. Taxi reportas kato. Enas sinaver fos kato e kamne reportas me kapi on efti mu me dora pio sida. Chu shento mikrofono kadi to ne roti sen, ala ena kua kala. Chu imun kapo set. Ξέρεις, τα είχα για να ακούσω και βγάλαμε μια φωτογραφία και έβαλαν την μέσα στα site, ξέρω εγώ και λέγαν «Κοιτάξτε εδώ, πέρασε η νομονία, ο Μίλου και να κλάψει». Ξέρεις, γράφα μου κάτω το ένα το άλλο, οπότε λέω «Είναι νοτροβία, δηλαδή που πάω Ισπανία, ακούω κομμεντάρια τους Ισπανούς, πέναρτη και γιατί είναι το έδω και ξέρεις, τώρα κομμεντέιτορ». Να κάνεις τον πράγμα στην Κύπρο, δηλαδή εγώ απλά λέω την άποψη μου, πέναρτη είναι πέναρτη. Σκέφτω τώρα, ας πούμε, να έλεγα για κάτι, ας πούμε, ξέρω, εναντίον της ομόνιας, εναντίον τα πόδια, πέναρτη, γιατί δεν το δω και δεν η βλέπεις, ξέρω εγώ. Different. Different culture. Yes, yes. It's a bit petty as well, but I understand because, obviously, the club and the history and the politics, etc., and I understand that there seems to be an agenda from certain outlets against the money and i've seen it myself even even today i did an uh, did an instagram post about it and a couple of the players messaged me i'm not going to go into it in too detail but th this happens everywhere it happens in england you know it happens in germany there there are newspapers that are affiliated with certain clubs and and that's just how it is because whether it be the the owner of the news corporation has got uh, shares in the club or they know the the, the they're related to the the president these things happen but Again, I, I thank you for coming on, Philemon, because you know, uh, you know, you're, you're 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 being yourself, and it's difficult to be yourself totally when you're behind the microphone on the television because you've got to be impartial. But I, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you sharing your views and your thoughts and everything, and I'm sure our, our viewers do too. So, before I let you go, do you have any social media, anything that you like to promote, anything you would like to mention? Anything? No. no. No, no. Uh, you're, you're off social media. You're one of the clever ones. You don't touch that. <laughs> no, um, I'm not very active on social media. I'm just trying to catch up. Ah, and uh, nice. definitely I will be watching you. Uh, it was a pleasure. I enjoyed our conversation. And I wish both you and Troy all the best. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Time and um, hopefully we can do this again sometime. Maybe we could do like a mid-season review when the, when the playoffs start. Why not? I'm at your disposal whenever right. you like. Roy, yeah, Haris two and Boston Arabola, Harigas, Odiga leader on the Serasti and Achindis Sezonora to an Axeginisi. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kalis Sinehia. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Right, gentlemen, before we wrap things up, just like to tell our viewers we have got the interview with Chris Dixon being released on Friday. Absolutely hilarious. Lovely guy as well. He says, you guys are going to love this one. So Roy, wrap it up, Philemu. Let's uh, believe in our team. Nothing's over. Support the team. Support the team.